Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Bloodline. I'm the Radio Man 03, and it's awesome to have you along. I'm going to try a little something different here. I'm going to put a few of these together. Hope everyone's doing great. I'm doing fantastic. I've played a little bit. Uh, new save name. Let's call it, um, let's call it Ronin. There we go. Off we go. <clears throat> Hope everyone's doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Zhoosh. To the castle we go. I probably got about four hours into this, maybe. Five hours. <clears throat> so, a little bit. A little bit. So, here's our guy. We shall be crafting him. And we're going to go with a little bit darker darker skin, for sure. Because, you know, it's... It's it's um, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Going with the Cyan. Cyan Warrior. And uh, hair color, I'm going to go with gray. And then hair, you've got all these different choices over here for your different hair. I like the one he's got on right now, but there are many choices that you can choose from in here. Going down the list, and then the facial hair changes up as well. Um, boom, like, uh, that's a nice big full beard. Yes, let's do, well, hold on, what about this one? No, we're going to go full. There we go. Uh, and there's, of course, more of those too. And then our head, we could do different things like this. Ooh, that might be pretty good. Well thing is it cancels out. You can pick one here. So I'm going to go with that right there. Boom. All right. And then eyebrows. Those are looking pretty big and bushy. Oh, there's the ones with scars. Uh-huh. Uh, it's very serious. Very serious indeed. Very serious. There we go. I like that right there. That's good. All right. And then you can use this here, of course, to turn your character. Take a look. And then you can even get more detail in here, too. Um, all this stuff. Ah, oh, there we go. If we get rid of that beard stubble, that's nice. That uh, kind of smooths him out a little bit instead of having that extra stuff there. Okay, swooper. And then you can alter all this stuff too, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to go ahead and go like so. <clears throat> okay, welcome to the Bloodline. The Bloodline is an open-end experience where you create the character that you want to play as. There are hundreds upon hundreds of spells and skills to unlock, something like 500, allowing you to craft the exact class you have in mind. Nearly every action you do is rewarded to, crater, or to cater to everyone's play style. Want to just craft weapons and build your village? Go for it. Want to avoid crafting altogether? Long story short, <clears throat> this is um, do what you want to do. Uh, right now, the game is mostly open world playground where you can roam freely, earn experience in whatever way possible, and unlock more fun skills to use in the big playground. It's, it's a pretty cool playground. Uh, keep in mind that it's early development, of course. And here we go. Runs pretty good for something, I think. It's an early development. W-A-S-D. Here we go. And a little shift. Uh, shift to sprint. We'll, we'll, we'll look at the stuff in our press space bar to jump. So every time you do these actions, you're gaining um, ability. Your ability is going up. Nothing in there. So, and you're going to be doing a lot of it. You know, some odds and ends are basically coming into us right now. RPG aspect to it as well. So we're going to be talking to this guy over here. and We're going to do some fun stuff. Like I said, I put about six hours into it. And I had a good time. I did. It's very much like Skyrim, <laughs> kind of. Yeah, it is, oh. the armorer. Good morning, Harbinger. Here is your uniform, freshly washed. I'm the Harbinger. Thank you, Frederick. Understood, thanks, Frederick. Uh, after you're done getting dressed, my father requests that you meet him down near the armory to begin today's training. Understood, thank you. Uh, well, let's see, will you be joining us? Uh, I sure hope so. It's been a while since we've sparred, hasn't it? Maybe you could actually beat me this time. Ha! I'd say we're pretty even. I'd say so too. Anyways, my father is waiting downstairs. Okay. Sure. And this is our, our different uh, skills right here. So you go through this and he'll kind of explain things. So a little more tutorial. Uh, well, we'll take a look at that in a second. We'll go tab. And then we've got inventory right up here. We can just hit I for inventory. But then right click on here and equip. There we go. And our boots. There we go. Lovely. That is us right there. Looking all teal and warrior-like. Okay, so I don't think there's anything else up here, but here's the world. It's quite huge. It's massive. It goes way out there. Lots of adventure for sure. Uh, down we go. Uh, there is a librarian down this next level we want to go talk to real quick. You got your health bar up there at the top at 350. Then I got stamina. Well, I got mana at 250 because, of course, there is some sweet magic in here. 
Uh, and then you've got your stamina bar at the bottom. That's 300. Uh, where is he? There we are. Here we are. Okay, what is it you do around here? <laughs> While my title says that I'm the Stronghold Mage and Advisor, my duties as of late have been limited. I'm more of a historian now. Is there a reason why you're studying history? <laughs> of course, as your advisor, it's up to me to provide you with the best plan of action in any situation that might arise, since we have no idea when or where the Unforgiven will return. The Unforgiven, okay? It's up to me to study all that remains of your ancestral text to find some sort of pattern. What exactly are the Unforgiven? <laughs> From what we can collect, the Unforgiven once were elves. They lived right here in Eudros, among men and dwarves. But their pride consumed them. They rose up against the old gods and somehow managed to actually kill one of them. Oh, okay, the god killers. Um, what is the Unforgiven realm? Nobody really knows. Nobody has never seen the realm itself. We've only been able to study objects that have come out of warp gates which help us make assumptions as to what it might be like in that realm. Okay. Uh, not much can survive passing through warp gates, but the stone from the Unforgiven realm itself has no problem getting through. It's incredibly resilient. Okay. A little background right there. The Unforgiven. We've got to watch out for them. So th there's a lot of stuff you can pick up. Um, like I could pick up this book right here, and I can just hit E again and drop it. Um, or you can pick it up and you can actually throw it by hitting Q. So this is stuff as weapons as well. There is a staff right here. We'll take that. That is a weapon, but we're not going to use it. It's just a stick. Woo! Look at that. Ta da ta ta. It's like a casino game. <laughs> the way it goes off. All right. Um, Thomas Dornscheidt, the artificer. How goes the research? And here I am, the Harbinger. Great as always. I just received the latest batch of Gryocopic stabilizers from my dwarven friends in Elder Glen. He's got a very steampunky look to him, doesn't he? Everything back there. Uh, uh, great as always. Okay, let's see. What were those for again? I've been trying to make a companion to help me in here in the shop. Just a small bot that can help retrieve tools, parts, and the like. Well, do you need some help, buddy? I hate to ask you to help with my own personal project, but if you're offering, I'd be foolish to refuse. There are a few things that I need to assemble my latest schematics for the boot, for the bot. First, I'll need a magnifying lens. I dropped the last one I had cracking it. The nearest place to get them is from uh, Gear Baird's shop in Elder Glen. I'll provide you with the funds, of course. I just need you to go and purchase it for me. Other than that, I also need a few bits of copper ore. Six copper ore should do the trick. Oh, okay, you got it. I'll be back with those items. Okay, set my copy. RPGs, things to do. So you can see we've got... Um, he wants now the bot to be delivered. We come out here, though. We've got a guy right here we can go talk to. These crates are something you could pick up and throw if you needed to. Hmm. Ah, uh, good day, Harbinger. You looking for some weapons training? I sure am. Could you give me some pointers? <laughs> Absolutely. What weapon are you interested in learning about? The one-handed, please. One-handed weapons are the most basic and easy-to-use weapons. These weapons range from swords and axes to maces and clubs. Generally speaking, one-handed weapons have average attack speed and deal moderate damage. Uh, one-handed weapons can be paired with the shield as well. Blocking with the shield allows for easier critical blocks, which slow time and allow you to deal double damage. Anything else? Um, the other thing I was going to be interested in, I think, would be bows. Uh, what did he say for bows? Bows are the most standard range weapon. Depending on the type of bow, the speed can range dramatically. For the most part, short bows are faster firing than long bows, but long bows deal more damage than short bows. You get the idea. I do, actually. Thank you. And uh, that's it. Anything else? Uh, great access? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> you are a funny little fella. You're giggling, huh? He's giggling. Oh, running level increased to two. I'm amazing. Let's talk to this fella here. This is Joffrey Woodkin. Actually, did... Yeah, they told us to come talk to him right now, huh? Harbinger, good to see you. I've actually been meaning to speak with you about something, if you have the time. Of course I do. Let me tell you a quick story. Go on. Recently, I was visiting family in Lundland. As I walked the streets of Helgasker, I overheard a conversation. They spoke of the Harbinger bloodline. They doubted the divinity of your blood. Said it's simply an old folktale. So they think I'm an old folktale. Okay. 
I recoiled, then stopped and gave it some thought. What reason have we given them to believe anything else? Oh, I see. I got to keep proving myself. Gotcha. Um, okay. Um, as I sat with my family that evening, I asked what the general consensus was regarding the Harbingers. They told me that the most people either believe the Unforgiven are gone forever and are unafraid of them returning, or that they don't believe they ever existed in the first place. Huh, how could people believe that? I thought the same thing. How could such cataclysmic events simply be forgotten? But again, I tried to see it from their perspectives. He's quite the handsy fellow when he talks. <laughs> it has been a thousand years since the last unforgiven invasion. A thousand years, okay? Uh, the Harbingers, to them, are nothing but a remnant of a once proud royal family. And it makes sense. Of course, they would think such things. How can we blame them? I had such a wide range of emotions. First, I was angry that people could doubt your divine blood. Then, I thought perhaps it isn't such a bad thing. Peace of mind like this hasn't been a thing for as long as history can recall. And that's what I kept thinking for my entire visit. As I rode back here, I realized something. This could be their plan. Make the world complacent. Make people forget the Harbinger bloodline. The Unforgiven could be patiently waiting for the opportune time, right? To strike the death knell and crack the skies open with their foul magic. Wow, cracking, wait, crack the death knell and, oh, crack the skies open, strike the death knell. Okay, okay. Uh, as it stands, I fear if you were to have a vision today, our, our pleas would fall on deaf ears. The world is too consumed by their own doubts and petty differences. If the Unforgiven were to invade now, the world would be consumed. Well, we've got to stop that from happening then. I'm not telling you this simply to instill fear in your heart. I'm telling you this so we may begin rebuilding your bloodline's once proud reputation. We must prove to the world that your blood still roars with pure divinity. <laughs> Train, fight, explore, help people. Anything you do to make your name known throughout Eudros. Even if you cannot convince people of your divinity, make them respect you as a person. <laughs> We're going to know he's Ronin, man. Before that, we must test your mettle. Now's the perfect time to see how you handle yourself in a fight. A small band of goblins has set up a camp just outside our stronghold. Which weapon would you like? I would prefer the short sword, thank you. And up oh, there, I'm on the way. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we gotta go kill some goblins, which is going to be much fun. Here's our blacksmith. Hey, buddy. Where do you get your materials from? Uh, other than the deliveries we get here to the stronghold, I mine for the resources myself. How can I do that? Ah, you want to try your hand at mining, eh? Well, you've come to the right man. You can find mining outcrops just about everywhere during our travels. Uh, you just have to know where to look, okay? Typically, mining outcrops can be found near hillsides or exposed rock. Rare materials can be found in hard-to-reach areas like caves or high up. If you're interested, I can give you some quick starter jobs to get you on the right track for mining. So that sounds good to me. All right, then, let's get to work. To start off, we're going to go get some coal. Uh, find them where you have to go. Uh, where do I go here? Uh, to Parford Lake. There's a nice rocky area there that has plenty of outcrops, and it's not too far away. Once you've mined five coal outcrops, return to me. I'm on it, dude. I'm on it. Awesome. We're coming over there. We'll be there soon. This guy here's a quickie. He's our cook. Okay, he's gonna teach us how to do a little cooking here real quick. Uh, could you teach me how to cook? He called me champ. Okay, basic stew. I can do that. Uh, you got it. I'm gonna do it right now. So he gave me some ingredients. We come over here. And we're gonna go potato, carrot, and cabbage. And then we're gonna cook that. Boom, we got ourselves a recipe and those open up down here. So there's quite a few. Um, you can catch fish and cook fish. I know that'll work. Uh, I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, okay, we're done with that. All right. Whoa. Zing. Uh, there, uh, I, I did it. Dun, 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 dun. 50 gold urn. Great work. Did you notice that you learned the recipe when you cooked it for the first time? I did notice that. I pointed it out. Now you can auto cook that recipe given that you have the ingredients, of course. Never hesitate to experiment with ingredients. Some recipes will call for multiple of the same ingredient. Some are just a single ingredient. Okay, some recipes will call for multiple of the same ingredient. Some are just a single ingredient. I wonder if there's other ways to learn it other than just throwing crap in there. Here's a test for you. Take this wheat, okay? I want you to turn that wheat into a loaf of bread. Here's a hint. Creating a loaf of bread will require four flour. Got it. Now, I've never had enough wheat for it. <laughs> I've never had enough. I've never had enough flour either. Do I have any flour in my inventory? Let's see. I usually have like one. Yeah, there's always one. 
But um, I think you have to build the bakery in this town first, and then you can make the flour to bring it back and learn how to bake that bread. Because uh, there's a gal outside here that's going to ask us for help. Hello, kind sir. Pembroke Wells, the quartermaster. Uh, I want to restore the stronghold to its former really? glory. Ah, well, I'd say the castle itself is in relatively great condition. Not much worse than it was a few centuries ago. What I mean to say is that the former glory you speak of didn't come from the thickness of the walls or how impregnable the defenses were. It came from outside the walls. Ah. You see, just centuries ago, just outside the walls of this castle was a village, a village full of people dedicated to the Harbingers. People flocked here because it was a beacon of hope and protection. The very reason your blood was given to your ancestors, that was the glory of the stronghold. See, we got to get the town put back together again. Uh, well, yes, how do I do it? Okay, rebuilding. Any of the plots out there are ripe for the taking. With enough dedication, you could have your very own village outside these castle walls. Be sure to take a glance at the time beyond the castle bridge. That'll give you an overview of the status of your village. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all. That is all. Oh, and by the way, you could buy and sell. Um, I've bought and sold weapons to this guy over here to make money. Okay, we talked to you already. So that is, we've got a, a few more people to chat with here real fast. Gods have mercy. That's just my luck. <laughs> Oh, hello, by Harbinger. It's nothing, really. A gust of wind came and blew my hat off my head. It got stuck up out there on the pillar, and it's not coming down. I, 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 oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Uh -huh. I'll be back with your hat. One, uh, one shake of a lamb's tail here real quick. So everybody comes equipped with a really cool thing called a grappling hook. Whoosh! You do that, and then you hold E, and you swing up here, and you just kind of... Oh, i got to go up a little bit higher. There we go. Okay. And then you just use Q. Now, that's using stamina while I'm up there, but I'm off of it now. Oh, careful now. And you just kind of eject yourself off by hitting F again. So we're going to take this over to him real fast. Hello, Mr. Lost Hat Man. Here it is. Oh, wow. You did get it. Thank you so much, Harbinger. You are welcome. Uh, you know what? It would mean the world to me if you kept the hat. If you wanted, of course. Uh, I'd love to keep it. Oh. Can't wait to tell my little girls that the Harbinger is wearing the hat they made. Thank you very much, sir. Got ourselves a hat. Let's put that on. Oh, look at that. We're so dainty. I'll tell you, it's nice. This guy here's got a nice quick job for us, too. Here, we're going to take it and make a little bit of money. What do you do around here? I've got to be going. Uh, he's the groundskeeper. Make Stronghold says it's a tip-top shape. Gotcha. Okay, um, well, hold on. Do you need any help around here? Well, to be honest, you see lots of goblin mold has been growing along castle walls. Oh, yeah, I get rid of that mold. Would you really? That would help me greatly. I'll do it. I'll be back with the goblin mold. Yeah, we need ten of those bad boys. Uh, inventory. We need our sword equipped. There's that stick. We're going to sell that stick. Your inventory can hold whatever you want your inventory to hold. <laughs> Just all cut, all of it. Okay, so if we come over here, we're going to get little sparkly things. You can see them up on the top of the screen there, too. Uh, and we're going to have some goblin trouble here, too. Because when you pick these goblin mushrooms, it draws goblins to you. You can usually hear them coming. That's going to draw them right there. <laughs> oh, look at that. They're climbing the dang wall up there. I think they're uh, out of control. What are you guys doing up there? That's weird. <laughs> I've never seen them actually do that. Are they attacking the inside of the castle, I wonder? Or will they come back down? I've never seen them do that before. They've always just been kind of... Uh, after you pick a few of these, there's a few that come up to you uh, when you're standing... There, there's somebody right there. Hi. Can I do that? I can't do that. <laughs> Why are they doing that? Um. Oh, I wonder. Oh, look at this. And then F again. <laughs> Stay on the ground, punk. What, what, what? <laughs> okay. This is really weird, guys. It's never done this before. They're usually down here on the ground with me. They're not usually floating up in the sky. Um, hello? 
the music is still very dramatic. I'm still looking... I, I, I don't know. Okay, we're going to go over this side anyways. What, what do we... It doesn't show actually on the, the counter whether or not you've actually got them. you got to check your inventory to see if you have the stuff in your inventory. I'm suspecting we'll, we'll have more. Hold on. <laughs> let's, let's try it over here. That was pretty weird. Uh, but you can see, you can use your grappling hook to grab them and yank them around. And they take damage when they bounce. And it's, I don't know, I, I've, I've actually found it quite enjoyable. There's, there's one right there. So yeah, if you just stick it, <laughs> you can bang them. <laughs> Ugh, the guts, they're everywhere. <laughs> so... Um, I thought, you know, I haven't played much around with it. I've, I, I like the firepower so far. It's pretty fun. I don't know. Uh, I think I, I think I got what I need. Okay, tab. Let's see. Do I have 10 of those mushrooms? I've got 24 goblin mushrooms, so we're good to go. I only needed 10. Woo, we'll jump a little bit. Yep, get that, get those. Oh, there you are. Once you knock them down, they take a lot more damage. <laughs> pick up, what did it say? Pick up 50 units? Are they in here fighting with our people? No, they're, they don't seem to be. See, we got that music still because they're here. <laughs> they're still here. They're stuck somewhere, it seems like. Hey, where are you? I'll, I mean, what? Maybe they're way up top of the tower. I, oh, there's one. Pathetic beast, kill five goblins. There's there's at least one more here. Come on, where are you? Come on. I'm looking for you. Alright, well, it's getting dark. When you kill the stuff, it just... The, the stuff comes to you. Uh, I think... I don't know. I'm going to go turn this in and see if maybe that stops the music. Let's go back. Oh. You can actually go up there. Um, oh, the mold guy. Oh, sorry, I went right past you, buddy. I got your mold in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Gold or zero. Experience earned zero. That's weird, huh? He didn't really give me anything for that, did he? <laughs> what a guy. Okay, so before it gets too dark, which it probably already is, I wanted to try the fishing with you guys so you could see it. And then we'll check on our levels, too. Uh, we'll just keep our eyes open to see if there's going to be any problem here. Oh, open world. Um, I'm going to close that. I'm going to go back up this a little bit. Open world. I'll, I'll explain open world to you in a second. Yeah, the music is still very dramatic. So the fishing game is pretty easy. Uh, we'll just talk about it while we do it. So you throw it in there, and then as it hits the green marker, you want to left mouse click. That's all there is to it, really. And if you get in the middle there really well, you catch fish pretty dang fast. So there, fishing is quite simple. It's a little mini game. We'll do it one more time. Because I can cook the fish. That's going to give me a little XP. There you go. So boom, you know. It's exciting. It's exciting. He's caught a couple fish. Let's go in here and cook the fish. And oh, I've got no stamina. Jeez, hope nobody attacks me. Go oh, easy. Food is just for your uh, your health, your hit points. Food. There's potions, magic, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm not ready. For oh, uh, yeah, I haven't killed the goblins outside yet, but we're going to come over here to the cook. The size of this place, huh? It's it's huge. It's very big. It's very large. All right, we're gonna cook up the fish. That gives us a little bit of food for some hit point stuff. Um, can I cook a potato? Yeah, see, it won't. If it doesn't make any, doesn't make something, it won't. Um, it won't use it. It'll just kick it back to you. 
cooked mini trout. A 70 hit, so that's 70 hit points right there. This guy's worth 35 each. So you can see the fish is pretty good. This guy's worth 150. Okay, that was the that was uh, the carrot, a potato, and a cabbage. So cabbage would be a good thing to get our hands on. Does this guy sell cabbage? Maybe let's see. Do you sell cabbage? Uh oh no 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 he's he wants to he wants to go right into the bread story I don't want to go to the bread story I think I can sleep let's go try I think I have to go back upstairs to the bedroom though the music is really nice. Then we'll go, we'll go get a few things to do. Okay, we made it up to the bedroom. I think I can sleep here. I think. Um, sleep. It's 18, 19. I'm going to go ahead and... Seven hours. There we go. Sun's coming up. Got cakes on the griddle. <laughs> let's go. All right. Let's go deal out some justice at a goblin camp. I think I might have something, some spells I need to do. Let's take a look and see. Game runs pretty good, I gotta say. Um, oh, picked it up on Steam also. I need to see my skill trees. Okay, so in melee, one-handed weapons, we're going to go ahead and come in here and give a point to run through. Okay. Then we're going to go back and we're going to go to, um, yeah, back again. I'm going to go to magic and I want to go to pyromancy and I want to do the embarm, ember spark. That's a fun one. Okay, so now we've got those guys going for us. Uh, and that give us a little bit of fun here. Uh, let's go, I think is it K? Yeah, it's K. Okay, so I can take this guy, run through... I can put him down on two, and I come to my magic selection here. I can get the Ember Spark. I can put Ember Spark on. Uh, I need to grab it I'm on number three. There we go. Perfect. Just like that. So now I can just hit three or two, and I get the extra, you know, the extra points there with the hits. All right, we're going to head out and see about those goblins now that we got our fire all taken care of and all that good stuff. I think it's going to prompt. Maybe it will prompt us for the overworld. No, not yet. It won't. Okay, we need to come and see her. Let's 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 talk to her first, and, and um, we can take care of her job after we do the goblins real fast. Mm. Hello, Harbinger. What can I do to help around here? Decorations. Okay, decorations dictate how, how the grounds will look. Okay, sure. Uh, that's right. You can decorate the grounds here at your stronghold however you like. If you'd like, I can give you a beginner's course. I would love a beginner's course. Let's get into it then. First things first, you need materials to construct decorations. Take these logs. You can use them to construct stick fences. Place them wherever you like. I'm on it. All right, so she wants us to place a few uh, stick fences. So if you go to, is it B? No, if you go to tab, there's a crafting section here. We go to, oh, and then you scroll from that point on. We do this, and then we can pick yet what we want to do in the pine logs. And there we go. So basically, we're going to be decorating the village. As you fix it up, you decorate the village with, uh, I'm assuming, quite a few different things here. Did we just do that for her? I think we did. Nope. Huh. Built those fences for you. Five are okay. Could you explain more? Let's see. Great work. Decorations like that will attract people to your village. Depending on the kind of decoration you place, it will increase the chances for certain people to visit. Can you explain that? Of course. I'll give you an example. If you place lots of engineer themed items, it's more likely that dwarves and artifices will come to visit. I see. If you construct items like graves and tombs, I'm sure that'll attract ghostly visitors and dark magic users. I see. If you're interested in making more progress, I can help guide you through constructing your first building. Yes, I would love that. Exciting. We're finally going to breathe some new life into the grounds. First things first, though, I think you need to come up with a name for your village. Okay, so um, um, let's just keep the name for now, and then I'll change it to Condoria. Um, I'll go change the name. Great, I'll wait here for you. 
Oh, um, how do I do that? <laughs> I told her I was going to do it. I'm not sure how to do that. Um, hmm. Well, crap. What do I do? Renaming the village. Uh, I can rename my village by visiting the village overview board, which is near the entrance to the stronghold. Ah, that's right. That's right. Okay. That's this guy right over here. Got a bulletin board right over here. Do a couple of jumps every now and again, too. Just keep that jump thing going. Interact. And here. Iron Haven is no longer. It is Condoria. Condoria. There we go. And boom. There we go. Perfect. All right. Uh, return to Mary. We did that now. That's good. I didn't do that last time. I just stuck with what it was. I've changed the name of the village. Fantastic. You're one step closer to starting your own little village, indeed. Now, let's get to the fun part of construction. Let's start with something simple, a building that won't take too much material. Let's go to the bakery. Just some pine wood, stone, and some wheat to get the bakers started. Head out into the area in front of the stronghold. There are plenty of open plots where you can assign a building to be constructed. Simply approach one of the signs and choose bakery. Got it. Once you've started the construction, return to me and we can plan how to gather the resources. Will do. Alright, so I thought the bakery would probably be a pretty good thing to have really close to, you know, this is a good junction right here. I was going right here. And if you come up here, we could do this, and it's actually considered, it's called Baker, not Bakery. There is no Bakery selection, so we're going to begin construction. And I don't know how much wood I have, but if you hold down the arrow key, it'll just, uh, she's going to give us some anyways. And I'm going to throw what he gave me in here too. And I don't have any stone yet, so uh, there's nothing I could do in that regard. But if we go back and see her, she's going to give us material to put in there. We'll get some of these little ones like this done so we know how the, the game works. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, about the bakery, uh-huh. I've started the construction. Okay, great. Looks like, okay, she's, she's, and I think she gives me some stuff too. Not to worry, I'll help with some of the resources, yeah. I should get you most of the way. You'll just need to gather a bit of the resources, uh-huh. Understood, I'll gather those resources, huh? Okay, nice, all right. So she gave us a bunch of stuff, and then we're going to go take care of those goblins, and then we'll chop down some trees and stuff if we have to. Alright, she gave us wood, so let's throw that in there. She also gave us wheat, but it's never 50. There's a farm area somewhere around here that I need to figure out where it is. I'm, I'm shy a little bit of the wood, and we've got... Well, that's not too bad, we need four more of those. And then she gave us some rock, I think it's like 15, yeah, she gave us some rock, okay. So, those are some of the resources we need to look for to get this bakery up and running, because I believe we have to have that, I think, in order to make the flour, I would think, to bake the bread. I could be wrong about that. I could be... Oh, God, maybe I should have looked to see if there was a mill. Well, she wants me to start with the bakery, right? So, yeah, we got some trashy goblins over here messing with us and stuff. Take a fireball, baby. <laughs> oh, oh, you're still moving. <laughs> it's just the sounds. Um, if I get a good swing on one of them, it's it's kind of funny to listen. They they do have a guy a nice yell that they do. I don't think I quite got everybody. Was that all of them? No, there's still one over here. <laughs> so you can see the, the counter goes up as you do that, right? The counter goes up. You can see the amount of damage he's taken as you go along. There's a nice little firewall part to the game, too, where you can drop a firewall. The basics of cooking. Uh, we could turn off uh, some of these uh, quests as well. I think if you go to your journal. Yeah, if you go to your journal, like a Dorscheid's bot, I think if I do that right there. See, I could turn it off so you don't see it there anymore on the other side of the screen. 
And I really don't know that we're going to be able to do too much of that. We got copper ore, which I know we're going to be able to get that pretty quick here. Um, so, you know what? I'm just going to leave it open. I'll just leave it open. At the moment, I'll leave those open. And then we've got to finish up this too. So we need to go out and do some mining is what you've got to do. Uh, so that's our next step. And that's going to be the overworld thing. And I'm kind of waiting for the sun to come up. I thought it was going to be up here, but it's not. So uh, I'll come back when it's brighter. Now it's, it's, it's going to be difficult to see me, but I'm right here. So this is going to be how we're... Mining resources is a, a pretty good this route when you go this way with it. So if I click on this tree right here, only certain trees are choppable. And you just kind of get to know which ones are the ones. And if you hit E, they just walk right over to it and start knocking it down, which is pretty sweet. And then you can just send them over here once that one's done. And have them chop that one down. And while they're working on that one, you find your next target. These kind of these browner trees, you see them? These pine trees are the ones that we can chop down. There we go. Okay, you've just opened the details of a location. Good job. Press E to skip. Um, Parford location highlights. Parford Island Crypt. Parford Castle. See that ring around the area? That's the bounds of the area. Entering that ring will allow you to camp at that location. So, what we could do is we could tell our person to come down here and set up camp. And once they get there, time will have traveled as they go along. And boom. Uh, we'll set up a camp and then we can explore that area for what we need. Uh, I th adventure. Oh, return to Joffrey. We've got a couple of things we could do. So let's go ahead and... Yeah, let's let's enter Harbinger. Harbinger Stronghold. This is our home for a while. We're not gonna I don't think we're gonna have an outer home, but this is our home. So that brings us back into here. Now you can go ahead and camp in different locations and stuff, and there's plenty of trees and stuff that you can walk up to with your character and chop them down. I'll see if I can get to do that. We're gonna go down south by that lake anyways. Joffrey! Oh Joffrey, we might be able to buy a better sword too. Hello. Have you taken care of those goblins yet? <laughs> indeed, sir. Indeed. We had fun with it, too. Uh, earned 50 to 25 gold. Earned. Fantastic. Seems you're ready to head out on your own, then. Yeah, what do I do now? What are the steps of Esros? Seeing that you can handle yourself, perhaps it's time for you to make the pilgrimage to the steps of Esros. It's a pilgrimage site, or at least it was. Now, it's more of a ruin, only visited every few decades by the Harbinger bloodline. Usually, the next inline Harbinger is brought to the steps by the current Harbinger, but your father is no longer with us. To my knowledge, you'll be the first Harbinger to do the pilgrimage alone. Well, that's too bad, huh? Um, nothing to fret, however. It was purely ceremonial. There are no dangers awaiting you at the steps. Oh, okay, no dangers, huh? Where are the steps? They overlook... Oh, careful. They overlook the Elder Glen Woods just north of here. Head there and make your way to the top of the steps. The shrine at the top is your goal. Okay, they're to our north. Elder Glen Woods. Okay. Oh, and before you go, you'll need a better way of getting there than on your feet. Take Ferguson. He may not be the most noble steed, but it beats walking. Where is Ferguson? I'll take care of him. Thanks, Joffrey. Where? Yeah, where is F Ferguson? The only horse I've ever seen here is this one right here, and I don't think this is Ferguson. Is this Ferguson? You're climbing, keep an eye on your stamina. Okay, whoa. Yeah, this is not Ferguson. I don't think this is Ferguson. I think Ferguson's a donkey, and I don't know where the donkey is. Maybe, uh, may, I think what maybe I have to do before I can get to Ferguson is uh, there's a stable construction right here. I think I have to get the stable up and running. Unless Ferguson's in here. I've never actually come back here. Yeah, I think I need to get the stable up and running. And then uh, Ferguson becomes available to me. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run down south and see about getting um, some of these ores they're talking about. Well, there's something over there. I think it's down in these valleys here that is where I get my... I was getting the ore before. I'm going to try to find something that does have that big ogre in it. Like this little person here. Oh. Oh, jeez. Oh, look at you. Oh, God, the big guy's here, too. Oh, 
Holy moly, you're a big old fella. What do I do if I hit you with that? Your mana goes up, but I need to find out what, what draws a mana up better. What can I use to bring up my mana? Let's uh, let's go ahead and eat that. That didn't do nothing for my mana, huh? Oop. Control changes your hotbar down below. Well, he's just uh, he's persistent, isn't he? Maybe I should try to fight him. so bad. Sentinel dust, huh? He wasn't so bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Feathers. Ah, copper. Okay, so copper I can't get yet because I don't have... Uh, I'm not high enough level in the mining. Okay, the big dude doesn't seem to be here. I'm going to go over here because there's some coal right over here. Oh, my mana's pretty low. I gotta be careful. Oh wow, look at this. Oh, there's a that's that's a new looking dude. I've never seen him. That's like some kind of a shaman dude, looks like, huh? There's bandits as well. So we got bandits and we got some kind of a goblin shaman there. And a a, a distance that looks like it's too far for me to jump, for sure. At at the moment. I I don't have enough jump skill. That was weird. We'll try taking the low road with that one. I hear some weird sounds. Kind of like mystery sounds almost. Just, ah, uh, you know. Creepy sounds. Can I get down this way? Oh, that's nice. Look at there. That was that was sweet, right? That was sweet. Okay, that worked out great. That worked out great. Ooh, I hope I get my copper, my my digging up high enough so I can get this copper too while I'm here. Oh, I can. We needed the copper too, remember? The other guy wanted copper from us. I'm going to backtrack here and grab up the copper that I think was right here, right? Uh, no, we keep going down that way. We're going to run into more more people. We're, we're trying to get a little bit of a bow. I need to get a bow. We need to get a bow, buy a bow, and buy some arrows. These birds, all I can think of is that they've got the feathers, and that's the only way I can see to get the, the feathers. You know? Oh, he... He dropped something else. He went ding. And I don't know what's in here. It's Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Alright, well we'll mark our way back down this way and see if we run into more copper. We needed like six bits of it, right? I think. I think we run into bandits over here. Yeah, there's a bandit right there. Hey, buddy. Take it to the face, punk. Splat! Your guts, sir. Uh. He ran right into that fire, didn't he? Silly fella. 
crazy guy. Why would you do that? Okay, we're gonna grab a little stuff to sell here. Ah, there we go. Some food. Nice. Deliciousness. Uh-huh. There we go. I'll take that. Oh, hey! How you doing? How you doing? So, you see the enemies aren't that tough at this particular level, but, you know, again, if you get a bunch of them all at once, you could have some trouble. What is that up there? There's a guy with a shield over there. That shaman used to be over here, too. There comes the guy with the shield. You are taking a licking, sir. That's called a licking. <laughs> so I can't arm his shield, but I can pick it up and use it as a weapon. Where is somebody? Oh. I've got a goblin up here. <laughs> so, you can throw things at people. And, like, I could pick up her arm or her leg or whatever it was that just came off there. I could use that as a weapon as well and throw it. So they kind of encourage you to be, um, you know, dramatic about your killing and have fun with it. Ka-ching! Eventually you can jump quite a distance. But forget... You have, you have magical properties about you. You're the Harbinger. The Harbinger. I don't think I can give him part of what I did. Uh, yeah. Yep, yeah, not yet. Okay, sir, I got some copper, but I realize now that you also want something else. The Kraken Stone. Let's get him his, uh, ore. Hmm. About that coal. Done and done. There you go, buddy. Uh-huh. Give me that there gold. Easy, right? I'd say you're probably ready to step it up and get some harder material. Copper. I might already have that too as well. Coal is always handy and we'll be using it soon. Copper is a little less common than coal, but still fairly easy to find. Again, that rocky area at Parford Lake is a good spot to look, but feel free to search anywhere you'd like. Mining five copper outcrops should provide enough material. Once you've done that, return to me and we can move on to the next step. Will do. I believe I can do that right now, right? Hmm. About that copper, yes, I've done it. Oh, I've oh, it doesn't count the other ones, huh? Interesting. Although I've got the copper, it doesn't count that. Well, that's kind of a bummer, huh? Hmm. Well, we did get the job done. We got a job done. All right, that's going to wrap up the first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button for me. Comment, subscribe, and share. I'm the Radio Man 03. Have an awesome, a fantastic, and a superb day. And I look forward to talking again next time. Look at us. Look at us. Amazing. Magic already. <laughs>